but that conversation goes in that direction with the kids because when, when we talk about sport related topics like the the gender stuff that it, it just comes out so you could say that about anything right really. but like <laughs> you know and, and so trying to kind of wrestle with that but also give people the correct information so i feel like that's part of that's critical you know, my job by <laughs> studying this stuff like not to go like you know tell people but if they have questions i can be knowledgeable enough to answer them Sounds say, like a good um, place to be. Right. So, anyway, sorry. Yeah, no, it's, I, I, I think it's great. Yeah. Definitely. All right, what else? That's it. That's so, it. I, I'm done. No one else have yeah. anything? Let's yeah. transform good. from darkness into light. Yeah, how about that? Huh. Now, I meaning what, we, what we've been doing until now has not been? Is that what you're trying to say? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, mm, mm, let's see. So, okay, so th there is one aspect that's kind of between the lines over here um, that I think is, is important to mention. Um, <clears throat> and that is, uh, and I'll just read it to you on the bottom over here because he actually quotes the Das Tzvunas. He says, The mitzvahs are not arbitrary exercises through which Hashem has an excuse to reward us. Rather, each of the mitzvahs, in all of its details, serves to actually improve us. In Das Tzvunas, written by the same author as what we're reading here, Ramchal states that the 613 mitzvahs correspond to the 613 parts of a person. Each mitzvah prepares the corresponding part of the person for its connection to Hashem. And there is a lot more um, to that concept, but the idea here is that as we've we've already explained, that a person is here on this world for the purpose of connecting to Hashem. The mitzvahs are here for that, and we understand how the neshama connects. That's easy. The neshama is a spiritual thing. But the body, it's harder for us to understand that. But the reality is that, as we've already learned multiple times, the body is able to be elevated to the point where the neshama can dominate it and improve it and elevate it. And the way that's going to happen is through the body performing the mitzvahs. So when the body performs mitzvahs, the mitzvahs correspond to different parts of the body, and they elevate those parts of the body when those mitzvahs are done, and that will allow the body to be elevated to a point that after death, it will be ready to receive the neshama anew and be able to be overwhelmed by the spirituality of the neshama and become a proper vessel to hold the neshama in the future as they work together. So, again, remember, the, the purpose of Hashem's creating the world, as we learned, is because Hashem wants to give. And the way for Hashem to give optimally is for us to earn what we are receiving. So in order for us to earn that, we need to do mitzvahs. Now, those aren't simply Hashem chose random things for us to do, Rather, these are methods through which we become closer to Hashem. And through becoming closer to Hashem, that itself is the reward, and that is the, the elevation is the reward, as we've already learned previously, and that's how this all works together. Okay, are we good? All right, moving on? Yes? Doc, you got to leave? Great. All right, so, <clears throat> I'm going continue. Vihine, you're in Vav. Vihine. The root of the entire concept of serving Hashem. Who is for a person to constantly be turning to Hashem. And this is you should know and understand that you were not created for any reason other than to connect to Hashem. And you were not put in this world. Right? For no, you were not put in this world for any reason other than to conquer your Yetzahara. And to enslave yourself, to subordinate yourself to Hashem, to your Creator, with strength and with intelligence. And this is the opposite of the power of physicality and the way it tries to sway a person. 
Vigiya manhig es kalpuloisov, and a person should guide all of their ways, all of their actions, Bahasaga Satakasazet, to reaching this goal, Vilayita Mimenu, and do not stray from it. So if we needed to write our creed, the job of a Jew, here it is. It's this paragraph. We're here because we're trying to connect to Hashem. And the way to do that is to conquer Sahara, subordinate yourself to Hashem, and in doing so, you will become spiritually elevated and you will not follow your physical tendencies, which are the Yetzirah um, embodies. Okay, so that's it. That's, that's, that's the life of a Jew in a paragraph, or almost a sentence, kind of. So if anybody asks you, there it is. So just put it up on the wall, Jody. Anyone who asks, just, here you go. <laughs> Correct. Right. Correct. Right. Yeah, you want to feel it, and and that and that's hard sometimes, right. for sure. Right. But that doesn't seem like it's necessarily going to be. Even if you're purifying yourself, you may not, you may not feel it. Have an emotional right. We right. We said that the last couple of weeks. We talked about how the the this energy is stored. It's stored energy. It's not it's not actualized until we leave this world sometimes, because we there's very little that a person can elevate their body in this world. They can. There is an extent to which a person can do that. And we learned about a few individuals who actually went to the world to come without death, right? They went in body form because they had elevated it that high. Um, and we had even more modern examples of people who, like Ronald H. Simon, who needed very little to, to live on, right? He lived on a glass of water and a, and a spoonful of honey for the day, right? So there, there is certainly an extent to which we can achieve purification of our bodies, but that's not always the case. It's largely not the case. Um, but yeah, there's there's certainly an advantage to feeling um, the connection when we do our mitzvahs, and sometimes we have a dry spell, we don't feel the connection so much, and sometimes what it's going to take for that is to learn about it more. The more you learn about things, the background, the understanding, some of the more esoteric aspects of a mitzvah perhaps, those are things that will sometimes help. But uh, yes, it's definitely the Yitzhahara that's trying to pull you down. If he says, well, I don't feel good because I do this, so I'm going to stop doing it. That's Certainly and, the and even taking it a step further, if you have, and, and this has happened to me, even like I'll take on certain mitzvahs and then it, it brings about a, a true sense of like, not, like it's not that there's no connection, it's it, it goes rapid or it makes you very anxious or whatever else. And so I've always equated that to being, oh, I'm not ready for it yet, right? And that's what I tell myself, I'm not ready for that yet. Um, which I know it sounds... No, it might be true. Right? So it might be true. When it comes to those sorts of things... You might need to take smaller steps. Right, um, which makes sense. But then also, like, like helping someone to understand that that, that feeling is, is... And again, it's, it's like, is that something to be... Person? Yeah, like, um, you know, it, and it, it comes from a variety of, like, places, right? Particularly, like, in my case, where I have very little support from the people who are closest to me, right? Or I get, it's not even a lack of, it's literally like, why in the world are you doing this, right? Um, and that that can be very anxiety producing. It's not even like, it doesn't have to make me sad, it just literally freaks me out, right? So, um, you know, or initially when I first started getting off my phone on Shabbos, that freaked me out, like not carrying my phone. And that was like more of a physical, like what, what if something happens, right? Um, and so, Again, that has sometimes has a lot to do with our own personality. If y'all haven't noticed yet, I'm kind of in some sense of the beginning. So Wait, who? Yeah. Who are we talking about? Um, listen. <laughs> why is we tap? I'm telling you, why is we tap? So, so <laughs> in those, huh? <laughs> I don't think that's very obvious. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's Jewish. Maybe. Or maybe you don't um, sleep enough. Well, that's a whole other situation. So, when I think about those things, it it is um, it comes from a standpoint of either. Not like for me, having that connection or feeling that positive feedback is almost necessary to keep me from like freaking out. Um, and so I wonder if, uh, you know, as that happens in other people, like thinking about, uh, you know, people that I know that aren't necessarily connected to Judaism in a uh, just in a flagrant way, like more in a cultural way. And it usually comes from some sort of like fear of, you know, not fitting in, like uh, not fitting with the outside world or, you know, a long list. Um, and so that 
I think can be can be scary. And I, I think one of those things obviously taking less on at a time certainly helps, but um, like really truly understanding why that feeling is happening and where it's coming from, I think is, is part of that struggle. Um, and so, um, yeah. <coughs> Absolutely. Yeah. There's a phrase that is interpreted differently. I wonder if you can go back and, and look at it. It mm -hmm. says, um, man must reverse his inclination towards the physical. And it says, conquering his mundane tendencies. I was wondering what your reality is. If I'm interpreting your phrase right this way. Okay, so. Hefech means the opposite. Yeah, I was thinking mostly about the conquering of mundane tendencies. That's what I found that really inspired how I read. Okay, so the the first thing he mentioned was kaveh shesitzer. Kaveh shesitzer means to to conquer, to overcome, to to subjugate your yetsahara. Okay, now the yetsahara, as we've already learned many times, is the draw to physical things. That is the Yetzirah. So that can be translated in different words, but that's what it means, however you translate it. Yes? What was the translation of bad habits? Bad habits? Not so excited about that. Bad habits for what? I mean, so, the Yetzirah is bad habits. I mean, Bad habits are certainly a product of the Eight Sahara, but I would I would hate to minimize the Eight Sahara to just being called bad habits. You know, the the Eight Sahara is a pretty powerful force. Bad habits are, I mean, they're also. They're, the Eight Sahara is our draw to things physical or products of the physical mind. You know, all of that is Eight Sahara. It's just inclination. It's a tendency to do physical things, things that are promoted in a physical world, things that the angels have no connection to at all because there is no such thing. So anything like that is called the Yitzhahar. That's, that's what it is. It's the, the inclination to do things. One thing, I didn't finish answering his. Hold on. So, so that's the first thing. So the first thing is conquering the Yitzhahar. Okay? That's Kaivish and Yitzhahar. Is that the part about reverse his inclination towards the physical? I, I don't have your I don't have your translation. Uh, I do. What page are you on? <laughs> I can just look at it. So in other words, the idea that uh, man must reverse his inclination towards the physical. No. Conquer. So here we're here. Right. That's what I thought. Okay. Overcomes his evil urge. Right. Okay. That's the first thing. Okay, right. That's now what we just talked about. Then we have after that, hafech is to overturn to to turn. I mean, what word do they use here? You were consciously deciding the subject. So you mean reverse. You reverse his inclination. Tavas hachaymer unitziyase. The taiva is a desire. Chaymer is physicality, and the tziyase there is the tendencies okay, towards then, that. And then this was the phrase I was asking about: conquering his mundane tendencies. So that they added in. I think that's it. That's but the next couple of words are via manhiges kol puleisav. A person should guide all of his actions. To accomplishing this, I, I think it's just an extra translation. In the also, I think he was explaining the word in the in, 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 in the in the in the thought. Yeah. In the also, which he's explaining as conquering the mind. In the also means the mundane tendency. So he's saying conquer. He's just saying when you're hafa ha'ava, there's hafa ha'ava ha'chomer, and then he takes it again hafa ha'ava. He, he's just applying he's applying the verb to both objects. He's using so Meaning using you can conquer two things, A and B. He's just adding the word conquer conquer A and conquer B. But just kind of flipping the words to use different words. Come on, Brad, what do you gotta say about this? Nothing. <laughs> First honest statement of the day. Well, second. Jody was pretty honest, too. <laughs> yes, go ahead. The, the Gemara Sukkah says that the Yitzhahara is going at the end of time, that the Yitzhahara will appear as a mountain to some and yet a hill for others. That, so 
has renounced the right to say hail to, to the, uh, the evil uh, doers. And as a matter of fact, what, what they're saying is that the announcing of attempts that the evil of the nation needs to do in order to get the righteous to shower hail. Yet there is only this one little hair to even mention the concept. Oh, you want to do this? Oh, yes, I do. And boom, <laughs> and they're gone. Whereas the righteous, so when you say bad habit, um, is, is the Yetzirah kicking off that bad habit each and every time? Sure. But the habit creates a way where the Yetzirah just has to say, did you remember that? Oh, yeah, I remember that. And then they're gone. And so you don't even have to, he doesn't even have to do anything. So the habit formed was an original Yetzirah. He's still the Yetzirah, but he barely even has to mention anything in order to get you to do it. And I think that's where... We're not doing that. <laughs> right, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, go ahead. So, in terms of what this is to connect to the family, but I, another thing that I remember learning that it has to do with optimizing our ability to do it. That is a method. So, it's one. That's a method well, to a achieve method this. You actually learned that here, by the way. I also think every, every, every trait, including giving, has to be coupled with other things. So it has to be, you, know, you can't give too much. If you give too much, you're going to end up opening up another door for the Israelites. Right. And, everything know, everything, has, everything, to everything has to have its limitations, for sure. Everything has to be coupled. You know, with, you know, the giving has to be coupled with the, the right, right measure. The right measure, but, but, the, but, but every character trait has to be balanced. Yeah, I mean, if we got too many people coming on time to Shachar, it's going to mess everything up. We need some people coming late. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to volunteer. <laughs> 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 hey, taking that for the team. That's right. I'll take one for the team. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, no, you're you're right for sure. Every everything has to be done in its proper time. And as he's as he's explained, and I'm sure he will continue to explain, every mitzvah is tailored to each person. Every person has their mitzvahs um, that they need to do in order to grow, and everyone's going to be challenged in different areas, and primarily in the areas that they need to grow most in, that's where most of their challenge is going to be. So if a person, let's say, is very good at giving, is very good at that, that's, they're, they're, they're just, that's their personality. So for some people, their challenge is going to be to perfect that to like the highest point possible. For some people, the challenge is going to be to not overdo that. And that's going to be their challenge. You know, so everyone's different, and we have to just follow the guidelines that the Torah gives us. And the Torah says, this is, for example, the Torah says you can't spend more than a fifth of your income on a particular mitzvah. Right? Now, somebody who is really into uh, estrog, and there's only one estrog available, and he's going to go spend $1,000 on the one estrog, but he doesn't have that money, so that's a misplaced yetzer type. <laughs> You know, that, that's using it wrong. That's not what it's for. The Torah gives guidelines. You have to stick to the guidelines. Now, there are general principles that we need to stick to, like giving, right? That's certainly a general. We have to be primarily givers in life. Um, but there has to be limitations as well. And that's what the Torah is for, is to give us those guidelines, those processes, and the boundaries as we have discussed. All right, anything else? All right, we'll call it a day. Oh, yeah. Thank you all for coming. Um, if we, uh, um, I would, I would like just because this, this later schedule is making it tough for me. So if we could try to start on time, or closer to on time in the future, that would be helpful. Um, it means eight thirty for you, okay? <laughs> um, I can't really get here at nine thirty, but everyone else can. I would like for people to be here by 9.40 so we can start at 9.45. So let's say 9.30. But I won't be here on 9.30. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine with me. Yeah, because they... Some of us who keeps them from being fine. That's the minutes early. All right.